Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, so I had a request to colour with my castle art. So I've got a handful of them here and I figured we would finish this page together. This is my Enchanted Faces book by Hannah Lynn. It's the small pocket sized version of it. Um, I'd already started colouring the hair. Uh, you can see this in my colour and chat video, the latest one, number seven I think it is. Um, so the hair colours are Castle Arts and we did 039 Mulberry, 028 Aubergine, 027 Indian Red Light, 089 Purple Deep and 034 Rose Pink. Um, so if you're interested for that. I'm just going to zoom, bear with me, there we go. Um, that is the hair that we have laid down. And I've got some colours picked out for the rest of this page. So uh, clothes are going to be blue, I think. We're going to use 043 Ultramarine, 098 Primary Blue, and this 099 Cerulean Middle Blue for just like the paler areas. So we're going to take the darkest on this 043 and uh, we're going to work out what's actually clothing bits and what's not and we're going to pop all the shadow in first with our dark colour so we're just deciding which bit will be casting shadow so this flower and we've decided it's going to cast a shadow up her sleeve. That's what we're popping in first. We, this must be part of a top, it's the same pattern, so we'll assume so. Start with that, we'll go with our second blue, the 098, and we'll work that in from that one. Just fade in the edges out so that it'll accept the next colour. Um, Darker pressure near the darker blue and then just just releasing that pressure out so that we're putting less and less colour onto the page so it will fade nicely into the next blue we have. So it's keeping that shadow and it's acting as a transition blue into the paler highlight colour. Uh, so I think we'll have a bit of that blue on here. And these ruffles it'd be a bit darker. Uh, back to our dark blue, our 043. Just going to pop a little bit of shadow in there and a bit in where these grooves have been drawn in for us. These will essentially be little folds in the like little pleats in the frill. Just add in a little bit of depth there and then we'll have a little bit of shadow from her face as well I think we'll do that I need to move my foot I'm sat on it it's going numb right I'm then going to take this uh, lightest blue I've got 099 and sorry I bumped you then didn't I I'm going to again work that over the top and then bring it all the way out 
I work my later layers over my darker just because it helps solidify the colour, especially with pencils like the Castle Arts and things. You just get rid of some of that white space for you by layering them up a little bit. And all you do is go back in with your darkest blue. And you can add a bit of that back in. Lighten your blend. Get rid of any harsh lines. Back in with your middle blue. Pale blue again. Just going over everything. For a bit of highlight, you can actually leave a little bit of white if you want to. Put the darker colours back in. got my brush I don't know I don't want to do this because you know it'll it'll smudge so in a moment I'll probably go get my brush right shadowing middle blue tone blending out slight lighter and lighter away from that darker blue we'll leave a bit of white again I think my lightest blue, just leaving a bit of a white edge to it. Adds a bit of highlight, just in this section I've decided that's where my light is. Come back in with those darker colours a little. And uh, yeah, right, let's do this little fluff as well. So my darkest blue, some shadow there from the face. Then our ruffles. Essentially creating little pleats from the little markers she's given us. Fading it out a little bit so I can add my second blue without a harsh line. And doing the same, go over the top a little bit and then fade that out. And then pop in our palest blue. I'm not going to add any white highlight here because my sun shines, or whatever, my light source is coming from the other side. Go back to the dark back in that definition you may have lost and there we have it so I would just kind of do that for the rest uh, well she's only got one more sleeve not so bad um, I need some we need some greens. I've picked out some yellows and browns for the sunflowers, so that's not a problem. But I haven't got any greens, so bear with me. I'm going to grab some. I think I want a more neutrally earth tone to that. I don't want it to be too bright or too crazy or anything. I'm going to pick some kind of more yellow toned greens. I'm going to go with these and we'll see how we feel about it. Uh, so 062 cadmium green, 076 green gold and 054 hooker's green 
interesting fair enough um, so again I'm going to start with my darkest tone you can start with your lighter one if that's where you're comfortable and I'm going to pop okay well this is why it would be nice to have your swatch sheet with you I need a darker green than that it's not going to do it bear with me easily fixed ignore the noise while I scroll through my big box of castle arts I'm going to have to use a black I'm going to add on 053 chrome green we'll see if those two greens together can make that dark enough I'm going to add in the fold of that leaf and then just some shadow in the bottom with those two darkest greens that I've got I'm just putting them together can always add a black over the top if we have to I just it's not really my preferred method we'll go for the 062 the next green and just bring that up over the dark and then feather that light to open in And then our 076 along here, giving it that kind of a yellowy green edge. Uh, I don't think I need these two greens, they're pretty much exactly the same. I'm going to get rid of that hooker's green though, we're going to keep the chrome green. I'm going to bring this fold a bit higher and then just blend it out a little bit, just releasing the pressure back to that medium green again lighter layers so that you're not immediately running out of tooth to your paper and then it's just gonna say no to everything you're trying to do especially the, with this cheaper paper and the cheaper pencils you've got to be a little bit patient with this to uh, you know kind of get rid of your harsher edges and your white spaces and have a little bit of shadowing from that hair finally with that paler green Put a bit of pressure on this time try and smooth that in a little can be a bit trickier with these but uh, we'll manage okay we'll do one more we'll do this one in behind everything so we'll add our shadow from the two from the leaves in front of it is this a leaf? Is that space? Okay, so we've got this leaf here in front of us. We've got the shadow from the fold itself, and then just kind of blend it out a little, and then a bit of shadowing from this flower. medium green to work that up a little blend it out you 
pale colour will only be really be this side of the leaf, so that's why I've got this medium green for the rest. And then in with the paler green that we have that green gold. And there we have it, just adds a bit of dimension and life to those those leaves. You could just use two colours, it, it really is up to you. I just find that, you know, when you add a bit more colour in, they tend to look a little bit more three-dimensional, a little bit more lifelike. Okay, so that's your leaf colour. Well, we have these sunflowers then, and I have picked out 117 Walnut Brown, 116 Raw Umber, 007 Cadmium Yellow, uh, 003 Golden Yellow, and 002 primrose yellow if you can hear the snuffling that is my dog <laughs> ignore him he's a uh, he's a frenchie he's now he just sounds that way and he sneezes a lot he'll settle in a moment right so again we we go from darkest to lightest with me and uh going to pop some darker brown into the folds of those flowers just a little bit of that colour and then number two is that 116 again just bringing that out a little bit and just releasing the pressure so it'll feather out into the next colour And we then have this 007. We're getting more into the yellow now. Brown on a sunflower, you ask. But if you've ever noticed, the middle will be a little bit. A little bit of a brown. Uh, zero, zero, three. Just getting lighter and lighter with those yellows as we come out. And releasing the pressure as we come into the next blend. And then finally I have zero, zero, two. And I might just leave a couple of tiny tips just to this one side in the white. I'm going to go back over a little bit with my brown now. And then that slightly lighter brown. To blend and work that brown into the yellow just taking away those harsh lines now by just laying a very light layer back over just to make everything look a bit more integrated pulling it up a little bit in line so they look a bit like petals And then I'm going to take that medium yellow 007 and again blend that over 
you're pretty much about the maximum tolerance this pen this paper can take now it'll just stop doing anything for you right nothing will change nothing will happen once you've reached its limit okay so starting again the darker brown 117 let's do the one that's in behind the others so we want a bit of bit of brown in here a bit of shadowing I'm going to add the folds a little. This one's behind here as well. A bit less shadow. And then our next brown, 116. Feather that out to accept the next colour. Nice and light. Get rid of any harsh brown edges. And then into that 007. Pop that over the top. Here comes the other dog. <laughs> they were asleep. Just when you think it's safe. The little one's different. He's not patient like my big guy. He'll cry. So, um, we'll, uh, hello, hello. We'll just give him a stroke and hope he, uh, hope that sits the monster. Otherwise, we're going to have to stop this video because he'll start to whine and moan. And it's difficult for people to ignore, <laughs> which is why he does it. So again, I'm just bringing in the lighter yellows, working my way up, leaving a little bit of just white to the top corner for a highlight. And um, once you get them all going, it will start to look a lot more realistic for you. For these centre pieces, I'd take a lot more of the browns. So uh, 117, I'm going to do some little circular patches, circular motions. Really dark in the middle. And then we'll take our 116 and we'll do the same. And our 007. I'm going to go back to that 116, just blend some of that brown just very lightly over the yellow just to give them a more blended edge. Zero, zero, 003 just a bit on these top edges a bit lighter here I think we'll have a slightly darker brown I'm gonna add what are we zero six nine Van Dyke brown into this Don't forget, everything always looks very odd when you've got bits and pieces coloured in 
and bits and pieces not. Your petals will never look right until they're all done. Don't panic, ignore it, carry on. It'll be fine when it's finished. I very rarely like a page until it's finished. And then all of a sudden you think, hmm, looks all right actually, that'll do. It's working in some of these browns. to that one run seven I decided I liked it more brown than yellow so I've only left a little bit of the yellow and there's that we're getting there um, right, skin. I'm not a fan of um, skin to start with, but on these um, Amazon papers, it is easier to um, layer with a marker pen first. So I'm going to pop a base layer down in alcohol marker. Same as these are single sided pages. I have a, a Le Mache marker here in number 25 salmon pink. But you just want your whatever you prefer to use for your skin tone base. Will do. Of course, you know with alcohol markers it's very important to lay it all down before the edges dry. The best method I've found for that is striping left to right, left to right, all the way across, nice and slow so it doesn't leave lines, but quick enough that it doesn't dry and leave a streak mark, and you end up with a nice smooth alcohol layer. I'll show you how I do the face, I suppose. <laughs> that should have been alright, shouldn't it? I'll go back over that in white later. So you've got to keep everything wet. So that means keep working on both pieces so it doesn't dry. And leave a line. Of course, this is where he decides to come back. The one point where I can't stop. So, I don't know. Right. So, continuing to work. Up and down the page. these things perfectly sorry about my dog he's fine by the way there's nothing wrong with him other than he wants to be picked up he literally does. he wants to be picked up he's such a baby right that is our base layer down for the skin Bear with me, guys. Okay, I'm back here. Yeah. Oh, I think it might be safe again for a moment. So these wings, I think we'll just go with um, greys, some pale greys. Um, I might add a little bit of a very pale purple tone, just almost like they're reflecting the, her hair, seeing as it's a dominant colour. So I have 
I've got titanium white 072 just in case. Uh, 067 Davies grey and 119 Payne's grey. I'm going to start with the paler one, the Davies grey 067, just because I don't want too much colour to them. Uh, I'm going to add a little bit of grey underneath those veins just to give a bit of depth and just fade that out into nothing You could add all kinds of pastel colours for wings, but I've already got quite a few colours on this page, so I thought we'll just we'll go grey. So I'm just coming in underneath each each vein and uh, fading that grey out and away to nothing. I'm going to take that darker grey, that Payne's grey, 119, and add a little bit of that just in closer to the base of those wings, I think. Let it fade up into that paler colour. Paler one, this bit in that I forgot here. And then I'm going to take this this purple deep 089. <laughs> Hopefully this is not a mistake. And I'm just going to very very close to the top of the veins. Just fade a little bit of that purple out into nothing. Just like the hairs reflecting. Onto those wings. If you've got a, like a clear glitter pen, like a Wink Stella or the Spectrum Noir, Glitter pens, that would be a nice, or stickles, you could put stickles over the veins, that would be a nice addition to this I think. I'll add a little bit here as well. Yep, I think that's, that will do. Um, you could always take your white, oops, sorry guys, bumped you. You could always take your white if you want to smooth the grey out. It's up to you. Well, it'll make it a bit more uniform for you. Be a bit careful as you touch the purple. Um, I'd kind of leave that be if I were you. Leave it with the grey. There we go, on wing. So you just copy and repeat. You could add a little bit of purple in here. Same thing again, just along the top. I'd probably do an, um, an alcohol marker background, I think, and I think, mm, well you've got your bees, so you don't want to lose them, you don't want to do a black, so maybe 
you know, um, maybe a yellow might be quite nice, like a deepish yellow to uh, complement those sunflowers. Eyes, uh, I think we'll go blue since we've got the blue on the page. We'll use the same three blues as before. I'm going to use my darkest one up in the top. Bit of shadow. And then I'm going to bring it around the edge of both sides just a little bit. And then up in the top again. Down around the edge a little bit. I've done a bit more this side just because I don't know, fancied it. A bit more shadow. Same in the top. Bit round the edge. Uh, that middle blue is the 098. I'm going to pop. In fact, I'm going to sharpen this. You want a really, really sharp point for this. Sharpen that up. And I'm going to pop some little... without breaking my lead we'll do that again sharper point a bit less pressure I want some little lines coming out from the middle and then I'm going to take my paler blue I'm going to go sideways so I don't lose my stripes and pop that over that will keep that little um, stripy blue look in place. There we go, bear with me. Same again, side to side, zigzag it up and down. And then back in with the darker blue. Deepen up that shadow, fade it out. We'll do that for each corner. And you can even add a couple of darker stripes to those irises. We need a bit more of the pale blue there, a bit of white showing through. I'll just look a little bit, a little bit realistic. I will, of course, pop some <laughs> glossy accents over the top of those eyes. And what you can also do is take a black um, fine liner and pop your black back in where your wax has covered your black lines. Um, same when you do your skin, your wax will cover your black lines. So you might want to pop those back in. I think for her lips, we'll use, uh, I think we'll match her hair colour. So I'm going to do the Mulberry 039 for some shadow. I'm just going to sharpen that as well. Add the darkest parts of those lips and then we'll have the Indian red light 027. I'm going to bring that in and round. Fade that out a little bit. And then we'll pop that pink, that rose pink, 034, over the top. Now you can see where I've got that real harsh line for that purple. So I'm going to go back in with that dark mulberry colour and I'm just going to feather that a little bit 
disperse it into the next colour a little. Feather that out, go back in with that medium tone, do the same. And uh, back over with that pink. Those lips are a little bit janky. But we'll add a bit of white gel pen highlight just there. A couple of dots and it'll hide. It will hide the bit we don't like. The other alternative as well is to... Darken, darken the lips, add more purple, get rid of the pink. Not my favourite lip colour in the world, but at least it doesn't clash with her hair, I guess. Okay. The bit I've been avoiding. Let's show you how to shade some of this skin. So we will take, I've got a few colours here to try. 019 Flesh, 074 Cadmium Orange Light. I'm gonna get rid of the Cadmium Orange Light. I think that'll be a mistake. <laughs> Terracotta 011 and Raw Umber 116. So I'm gonna start with the flesh because it's the paler colour. And um, we're just gonna add some shape so we're going to add the shadow of the hair in around the face just blend that in Same here. Give us the sides of her face more of a rounded shape by adding some darker colour. Blend that out and inwards. I've chosen quite a rosy colour to base layer with, so it will do for her cheeks as well. I'm not going to be very clever with this and add noses in and all that jazz. I'm just going to give the idea of one bit of shadow under that lip. Maybe a little bit here. Give a little bit of cheek shape. A bit of definition and depth in the fold of the eyes. And a bit of depth underneath the eyes. We've got our our mapping out. 
I'm now going to take the darker raw umber just for my shadow in along the edge of that face. Same again, just bringing it all the way around the edges of her face. Just feathering it in a little bit. Same up the other side, adding a bit of darkness in these corners, under the eyes. This is by no means a work of art, it's just how I do them. Took myself dry going mad trying to make them look like real girls when really they're not really drawn that way. This mid-tone brown, this terracotta light, I'm just going to do the same, bring that in a little bit. Down the sides of the face, into the cheeks. look awful they always do this looks way worse in person than on camera camera it always looks okay but to be honest it looks janky at the minute until you start getting all your layers on and uh Building stuff up and in. Okay, I think I may go back to that. I might add this cadmium orange light actually. It's very, very pale just to see. So this is 074. Just gonna add that in. I'm gonna bring that one further in. Reduce the pressure as I come in. I keep kind of a highlighted area in along the middle.
And then we want a really pale, kind of creamy colour. Ooh. Uh, let's try this 002, this primrose yellow we used earlier. Just something to smooth those colours out a little bit. And a bit of yellow to this skin tone can't hurt. Leaving a bit of a gap around the eyebrows to give that kind of highlight that you get. As always, we are coming to the end of what this paper will allow us to do. So we'll just try and get this blended in as much as we can. Also, stamp coming to a nose is to give it kind of an hourglass shape. Hmm. That's about it. I've literally just done two triangles in the sides. Not the best, not the worst I've ever done. I think we're going to add a bit of pink. I'm going to take this rose pink. I know it looks a bit crazy, but we've got that many layers down now. As long as we're light with the pink, it, it won't add too much colour. I'm just going to put it in on this corner. Like so. Same again. Okay, gives you an idea. I don't think it gives you an idea of the truth of how janky castle arts do skin. So I'm going to actually show you. I want you to see the truth, not that smooth picture that it looks to be. And then think, oh, okay, I'm crap. I can't use pencils. I'm no good. If she can do it with a castle art, why can't I? Because the truth is, never as smooth as the camera tells you. Look at that. Oh, my. Oh, my word. Dog's back. <laughs> so what I would realistically do with skin, once I've played and done all this, I would take a Prismacolor ivory cream white and smooth that over and you'd be surprised just how much um, 
that pencil will hide all of your sins. It'll just smush it all together. It won't fix a castle art. It won't fix everything. But it'll give you the smooth blend that you can't get by doing it that quickly and like that. Don't get me wrong, there's people you'll watch they will create amazing, beautiful skin with castle arts. I'm not that human. A lot of people, they're not that human. So, um, you know, the truth of it is it looks okay. And I'll smooth it with a soft pencil and it will look decent. And it will do. But they're just not the easiest to create a portrait unless you're very skilled at doing so. So, you know, don't be disheartened. Don't let it be something that puts you off. That's not what I want my channel to do. That's why I've shown you, shown you my shape. I've shown you that up close in the way it actually looks. So, you know, you can see the actual truth of it. Skin, for me, with these pencils, is very, very difficult. Especially on the Amazon paper, but I get there in the end. I use, you know, use use a Prisma Y or cream and blend it out. If you don't have a, a set, a big set, it doesn't matter. Buy a Y from Amazon, buy cream from Amazon, one of those, and... Um, blend your pencils out with it it's not gonna perfect everything but it'll be enough that you'll be a lot happier with the finish that you've got it'll look a lot less muddy and patchy and bleh. okay guys um this video has got a bit long so i think that will have to do um i literally have my dog on my knee now so that he'll behave so <laughs> he's decided we're done i hope you found this video useful um, and honest and you've picked up some useful advice from it give it a thumbs up if it's the kind of video you like to see and thank you so much for watching as always guys and i'll see you in my next video and you will see this video completed and blended out in my end of the month video as always thank you